Machine learning is an increasingly important part of our everyday lives. It's the way that our phone recognises our faces, probably even embedded in your car or your home heating system. Now the difference between machine learning and a more traditional computer program is that for a traditional program, the programmer writes the algorithm, decides on the questions that are going to be used to sort, interrogate the data. Whereas in a machine learning process, the machine learning program itself writes the algorithm. In today's lesson, the students are going to be the machine learning program. They're going to develop an algorithm to sort sweets, but also they're going to learn about the effects of changing the size of the data set. Now we're going to demonstrate how machine learning depends on the size of the data set. And when you put it like that, I suspect it's quite daunting for many teachers who don't have a, a professional IT background. It's machine learning size of data set. Well, we can start off quite simply because the, the exercise really is a pen and paper exercise. Printed sheets, your experimental data, your horrible liquid resource sorts, pen, pencil, ruler, you're ready to go. So we've got two, two sets of data, thingies and what's it's, and the students have to identify whether the three labelled pieces of data belong to either a thingy or a what's it. Well, it's interesting, it's kind of ambiguous at the moment, isn't it? Which I suppose yeah, deliberately it's... so, yeah. That, that illustrates one of the points of machine learning, is it, it, it can be very vague. Let them classify them, see, see what rules they are applying, and, and then we can have the discussion about that there isn't a right or wrong in this necessarily, but it's, it's are you choosing a category that will fit? But then, and then where, where do we go from there? Well, from there, we then, we, we then start to increase the data set. Yeah, so then we, we can move to uh, still thingies and what's it's, um, but we have a range of colors, we have a range of different shapes. It's a better data set, there are, there's more data. So at, at this point, I expect, as you said, the students tend to get this. They do. And I suppose yeah. they main, they're, they're mainly thinking, well, there's not much to this, it's quite a simple message. Yeah. Uh, we've chosen the right characteristic and we can separate these yeah. two things. How do you make it, how do you go deeper? I, I'm assuming it involves it, the it, it involves the Harry Bull. Um, if we look at the thingies and what's it's, that there are only two types of shape. They either are or are not four-sided. Yeah. They're quite straightforward. With Harry Bull, there are six, seven, eight different shapes in there. Um, some are very similar, so you'll have um, bears, which could be one of three colours typically. Let's have a look. There are, yep, there, there are normally at least two coloured rings in there. And so the questions that you start to ask then may start with colour. And students will often say something like, is it a heart? And that, that's too, too abstract a question. Uh, the, the better question would be, what characteristics define a heart in terms of the shape of a Harry ball? So, so what, what activity do the students now follow to, to explore this, the, which is the, complicated the, idea? The students uh, place the d distinct shapes in a box, A, B, C, D, E or F, and then they create a decision tree. They start off with what is a qu what question do I want to answer, so what shape am I trying to get to, and then ask really simple yes, no questions. Is it red, is it round, is it rectangular, does it have a hole in the middle? Each of these should be answerable with a yes or a no. Um, one of the key things that you can say to your students is, if you can't answer, can't answer it with a yes or a no, then it's probably a bad question. And in terms of uh, health and safety, just don't, don't eat this. <laughs> don't, don't eat this. Okay. That's what you can. It's it's a, it's a serious point. Um, <laughs> check. Do do your students have any allergies? Yeah. Yeah. Check. Um, if you're going to be working with sweets, are they halal? Yeah, it's it's, it's a valid point to make. Um, you know, some students will have allergies to gelatin, sugar, and the other point is if they're going to be touching them in the classroom, you don't really want to be picking up someone else's germs. Yeah. So don't eat them. Don't eat them at all. No. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to sort the three shapes on the bottom, A, B and C, into either a thingy or a what's it. You're going to have to make some decisions. Do I think it's a thingy? Do I think it's a what's it? Why do I think that? That's the important stuff, okay? I'm interested in your decision making, how you arrive at it. We got it? Cool. Yeah, so so what, what choices have you made here? So you've decided... So for A, I That's pick the thingies because it has one eye, but for B and C, I pick Watsers because they have two eyes. So, so, so this table all agreed in the end that A is a thingy, B is a Watsit, and C is a Watsit. Every decision you make is valid. It's 
do, do you arrive at the end point? Are you able to, with some degree of certainty, some predictability, to say, this is definitely a thingy, this is definitely a what's it, yeah? And with, again, we're back to quality of data, we, we've only got six data points here, and we? we've got three, three grey shapes, we've got three green shapes. So our ability to say with certainty that something is definitely the case is really reduced. So I'm going to present you with a, a much wider data set. Yeah, no, nothing on the face of it has the same colour. Nothing on the face of it has the same number of eyes. Nothing on the face of it has the same number of sides. What I want you to do is I want you to think, OK, so what rule or set of rules could I apply to something being a thingy or what's it, given the data set or the data points that I'm now being given. Nothing to do with like eyes or like the shape, it's just like the number of sides mainly. So for what's it, so I, I recognise that every single what's it has four sides. Maybe colours as well, eyes. Yeah. Like you can tell the difference because in thingies there's two and one. Uh, have we got an agreement? What defines a thingy? What defines a what's it? Um, well, uh, the what's it have a similar, uh, similar pattern, which they're all four sides. Okay, so what you're doing, you're pulling out a, a very simple question now. Is sides equal to four? If yes, it is a... A what's it? What's it? If no, it is a... Thingy. 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 Right, okay. Right, so what we're going to do now is apply what we've, what we've learned, what we've developed in terms of the complexity of decisions, but also keeping each question simple into building a, a more, more coherent decision tree. So in this experiment, we're going to sort some Haribo, which is our experimental data, into its different shapes. We're going to use our shape sorter, A, B, C, D, E, F. You're going to put one Haribo in each box, what questions will direct your user to deciding that it is actually a cola bottle or a bear or a ring or whatever it might be? Did you think about how simple the questions were? And it's, so the yes, no questions. So what's, what's your, first, your first question? Is, is the colour red on the uh, shape? So, any, any other questions? So, is the colour red? Uh, we could do it if... Has it got more than one colour? So, by breaking it down, this, this key word, decomposition, yeah? What, what are the simplest questions I can ask? If I'm certain that I cannot simplify the question anymore, then I'll go with that question. What kind of... Um properties or characteristics of these did you use uh, to, to start building your decision tree? Um, I first used what the colours are and if they use multiple colours and then I'd also go for the shapes and the type of shapes like how this was mainly round but also was like a square at the top. So, so everyone's developed their decision trees so what's the next step in the lesson? Right, so the next step is they are going to swap their decision trees, their, their, their experimental data, with another person, so in this case the other table, and the other table are going to try and identify the Haribo types aligned to A, B, C, D, E or F. Does, yeah, I see what you mean. Or maybe that's no. Is it a regular shape? Okay, so guys, so, very quickly, hands up, who got it right? Who were able to follow the partners? Oh, that's pretty good, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a bit, twelve and a bit. So, about two-thirds of us, thereabouts, something like that, get my maths right, two-thirds of us were able to follow our partners' rules. And what are the important teaching points? Important teaching points all revolve around data sets. It's about the size of the data set and it's about the quality of the data set. The more data you have, the more likely you are to be able to predict accurately. The better quality of the data, the more likely you are to be able to predict accurately. 
And how can you demonstrate the principles of this activity to embed what they've learned? I would use an app, an online app called 20Qs, and that uses um, thousands of previous users' answers to questions in a machine learning type environment to try and arrive at something that you have thought of. Why do you think it's important to teach machine learning? It's, it's part of computer science, uh, but it's much wider than that. The skills that they develop, they, they use in biology. For, for classification, they use it in maths for prediction and probability. So these are skills that are across curricula. It's not just based in computer science, as from our lesson today. You don't need to use a computer. It's paper, pen and paper exercises, getting students to think. It's about logic and it's about framing questions. It's, it's getting people to understand that it's about the quality of data. Yeah, it's about the, the, the size of the data set and the impact that it, it can have. What I found interesting is that the lesson begins, and it's deceptively simple, but as you go through, then it's revealed to the students, and it was revealed to me, that developing algorithms, developing questions to sort something as simple as a bag of sweets is actually quite difficult. And I think the valuable thing is that the thought processes, that the techniques that the students learn can be applied way beyond computer science. They're techniques that you would use in, in biology or physics or chemistry, mathematics, a wide range of subjects. Mm -hmm.